Welcome back to the OBR Film Breakdown. We are continuing our quick hitters on the Browns draft as we work toward the end of the draft. And we're going to hit on the Browns pick at 160, Nick Harris, the center out of Washington, a guy who comes with a bevy of experience and especially a scheme fit at 6'1", 302. Harris is a nice, low-to-the-ground, compact center with big, thick, lower body who can be able to handle himself in space really well. Uh, enough play strength, but a guy who in space handles himself well enough to uh, to certainly be an important part of a zone scheme system such as the Browns are going to employ here under Kevin Stefanski. We're going to take a look at some of his wide zone work first. He is a really effective uh, player, quick out of his snap uh, to stance to run, which is important for a center being able to function those three things quickly. And he is uh, usually a guy that you will see be able to handle passing off the first level and climbing to the second level as we see here. If you watch Washington, he is continually, Harris, I mean there, is a guy who is continuously able to handle getting to the second level and opening up those downfield alleys for whatever path his running back chooses, whether it's bounce, bang, or bend, he is an important part of that. Again, you see him here climbing on this. Just This is more of a... Uh, a pin-pull scheme, but it's still the same sort of steps for the center, right? He's got to pass off the zero nose quickly, gets a hand through, slows him down so he's not able to shoot the gap, climb to the second level, and make sure you're working your leverage, which is important, getting your shoulders turned to seal off the, the necessary zone for the back. Don't pay attention to the line around him, what happens. Focus solely on what he is doing, his ability to get to the second level and form the correct body angle. Again, you see here his ability uh, with the shade in front of his face, he has to work to seal this player, right? He's going to open that path. This is almost sort of mid-zone, less, less wide zone, maybe more mid-zone, and we get this quick bang path, and you're going to see him do a really nice job of uh, a, sort of an uncanny, quirky decision here to turn his back but that back turn there is what seals the alley. You don't love the technique. You like to see him work his hips and butt around. But he's, uh, you know, he understands the nuances of the position and can sometimes get things done in an unorthodox manner, as we see here, and what makes him a really effective player in this scheme specifically and what drew the Browns' eye to him as a potential down-the-line center uh, who could maybe take over when J.C. Treader, is, his contract here is finished. Another look here at outside zone. Good job keeping the right arm engaged, right? Has that zero nose again, right arm engaged, climbing with his eyes in the correct position, knows who he is going after, right? He notices that that outside linebacker, uh, sorry, the Mike linebacker here escapes outside taking his path. And when he sees that, right, he gets the eyes back inside and is there for the backside will coming in to make this play and he will help seal the alley for this run. It's what you like, the awareness the ability to get out and run, and the awareness to handle it as well. So another look at what would be a wide zone body positioning for the center. Again, not wide zone up front. They're running a, a jet sweep by their outside too, and then sort of the ability to sell mid zone from uh, the front side tackle guard here. But just pay attention to Harris's ability to get out and run. Stay on this uh, backside will linebacker, run him, and that is why there is an alley open. If this linebacker here is able to just straight down the line pursue this play does not have the ability to gain those six or seven extra yards so again it's that ability in this system to get out and run and impact the second level just notice how quickly he's out of his stance easy fluid running motion climbing taking care of the first level but then also always having his eyes prepared to pick up linebackers running over the top or through a backside gap, as you see here, just impacting things as you would love to see. And the, the Browns were they were really drawn to the athleticism of a guy who was 6'1", over 300 pounds as he weighed in at the combine, drew their interest, and especially the interest in the scheme that the Browns will run quite a bit in 2020 in the wide zone. So they will also use the uh, the center pull, whether it's pin pull or any sort of G scheme where they can sneak the center out. Harris is quick enough. He's good in screen game, which Stefanski uses plenty, but he's fast enough. We see him used on a reverse here, right? Selling power counter to the front side with the reverse. Going to pull out the backside guard and center here for the reverse. And you can just see how well Harris moves in space. He's not one that's going to be easily ducked where DBs are just going to be able to dip inside that off, and he's going to stay on, guys get downfield, 
handle them at the point of attack. Another look at a center pull scheme here, right, is they're sort of leaking him as the center, uh, almost for a center counter, which is a strange scheme. But, you know, anytime you have a center who can move this well, you can implement some things, right? He's, he's ultimately, as he pulls, trying to kick out the end man on the line of scrimmage, this edge number 96. But as he dips down and, and uh, squats to play the edge, he just logs him inside, a guy, like I said, much like Mitch Morse in, in Buffalo, a center who can really pull and uh, get out in space and handle duties that typically guards do. The NFL teams mostly play four-man fronts, so it's it's common to leave guards uncovered, which gives them plenty of pulling opportunities. And the Browns do it with J.C. Treader. They have done it in the past. I expect them to do it again. And they have another guy who can handle this stuff in Harris. And uh, as you see here, um, just more of a uh, you know looping center Simple looping center scheme here where they're going to pin the guard, right? Try to pin and loop around for the backer, and he does a fantastic job. Snap, little cross shuffle here, right? Little shuffle to give his guard some time to get that loop block around. Is able to do that, gets out in space, is comfortably able to drive him out. And if this, you know, if they were able to take care of the backside shade by number 51, the right guard who kind of stutters his feet, it has a nice alley to run through. So, uh, you know, like I said in the wide zone, a guy who can handle the athleticism encountered uh, at the position, he is going to excel at this side of things, pulling, getting out in space, and handling DBs and linebackers and even safeties at the second level. So just as positive as Harris is at the, the finesse side of the game, the ability to get out and run and get up to the second level and, and have the understanding of wide zone schemes and running uh, using his athleticism, is just as dangerous on the power side. And you notice it specifically when Harris has to deal with either gapping back or dealing with head up bull rushes in his face. The thing that you will notice here is his propensity to hop back and leave both feet in the air when he's doing so. If you notice it here, he's dealing with a head up bull rush uh, when a guy is right over his face and he is not very fluid at being able to anchor that position. And too often he is seen hopping back in space as we see here and as you get into the NFL and you deal with bigger guys and defenses are going to get more com comfortable putting head up players in front of him um, it is going to be a problem for Harris if he cannot find the core strength only 20 bench reps not a very strong guy in nature he does a nice job fighting here but you can see that he does give up ground and he gives up ground pretty quick uh, with bull rushes it is not something that he is very fluid at being able to anchor and hold and keep that back flexed it's just something to pay attention to. If he is not able to make it at the NFL level, it is probably tied to his inability to handle these bull rushes that teams will consistently throw at him. His propensity to leave the ground with his feet, as you see here, right, the feet, both feet in the air at one time, that could get him buckled by bigger, stronger, faster players at the NFL level. So it's going to be a focal point. Bill Callahan's going to get his hands on this young player. He's going to obviously try to mold him a little bit in a different capacity, especially dealing with these bull rushes. And, and they're going to try to work on him not leaving his feet as consistently as we're seeing because it gives him trouble. You know, if your feet are in the air and then as you try to get your feet, back, you know, as you see here, feet are in the air, get your feet back on the ground, you can easily get turned and thrown around as we see this uh, nose guard is able to do from BYU. So this is something Harris is going to have to get better at as a long-term prospect for the Browns, especially if they want him to be a part of the interior offensive line. How does he use the bend flex in his back, lower body, anchoring these bull rushes, especially from zero nose guards that teams will put in front of him to exploit a potential weakness in his game? The same thing ties into Harris when he has to gap back using the same issues that he has with bull rushes. He's not a heavy contact guy. You will see him quite often pause briefly before making contact. I don't think he loves to gap back. It's not a part of his game that he loves. He doesn't love to drive people off the ball. And I don't see a guy who just craves finishing. I think too often he gets top heavy and just tries to lean in these situations and hope he can just block long enough to allow the ball carrier to get by, which is not always going to get it done, especially when you have to be able to quickly work gap back and handle powerful defensive linemen at the point of attack. Right? He doesn't deliver much of a blow. He just sort of catches by, by slowing himself down. And you can see his feet, he does not really drive into the gap back. Slow feet, and that often gets him in trouble as defensive players up front are able to swim, move, or use their hands to get into him and quickly change his poor momentum and get past him at the line of scrimmage. Again, another example here, gapping back against a head-up three. 
Um, you know, it's it's you you can just see the slow nature by which he doesn't deliver. He's not the one taking the impact to the defensive lineman. He's sort of catching and hoping to just get by. And you can see how easily these defenders are able to one arm lock and sh- you know shed his point of attack block, and it's just going to get him into trouble. He stays on people. He tries. He fights. But the strength, the play strength up front for gap and power situations where he has to gap back or deal with a bull rush are going to be things that he has got to get better at at the NFL level if he wants to become a consistent player over the long course of his career. Again, I think Harris has the ability to handle the duties of this scheme. I think he can be a player down the line. I do not see him with the shorter length. I do not see him as a guard whatsoever. I don't think he should be competing at right guard right off the bat. I think he's more of a center of the future type, and they can try to get his body changed a little bit, get stronger at the core and upper body to be able to handle these bigger linemen at the NFL level. They can work with him in a strength program. Uh, A good potential player here, but you certainly understand why he was there at pick 160. He does come with some concern, but he has some traits too that you can't coach up for this scheme. So he will be given a chance to play center at some point, Hopefully he can continue to mold, shape, change his body to be in position to do that. So that is Nick Harris, pick 160, the good and the bad of the prospect, what he potentially looks like if he makes it, and the things that could slow him down from uh, you know, being a guy who can make it to a second contract and ultimately a contributing part of the Browns franchise up front at the center position. If you have any comments, leave them in the, in the uh, section below. Any questions, I will try to answer as well. We always appreciate subscriptions. You can do so by clicking the link in the bottom right corner of this video and appreciate your attention to the OBR uh, website where we have a full breakdown free for your viewing linked in the bio here so you can get a bigger feel for all of the things Nick Harris does well and poorly. Thank you for joining us. Go Browns!